jump in. I was, thank you for everything. I really appreciate it. It's a beautiful quote. I was thinking about the secondary traumatization. I was thinking about how, how it is to, 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 for these women or men to gather evidence. And I heard um, uh, Sophia, but also I was wondering if you would have concrete suggestions, concrete advice. What kind, we know that it's very complicated, the status of evidence. Uh, would you have advice to give, maybe using the new technologies, why not, or other aspects? What can you tell us about how can we maybe help people better understand what is it to provide evidence? Thank you. For sexual harassment or sexual violence? Well, I think it's a very complicated, I, I don't know if my colleague would like to answer first, but um, I would love to offer some kind of insight later. يعني بالنسبه للحلول بصفه عامه يعني هذا السؤال حتى ماشي في غير الانجليزيه ان بالنسبة لنا احنا في سن ميسور الفكرة الأساسية أن نشجع النساء أنهم يتكلموا على العنف يعني من قوس الاعتناء يعني تقريبا نفس الفكرة مع مازالتاش أنهم يتكلموا هذه أول حاجة يعني لأن بزاف ديال النساء والفتيات كيتعرضوا لتحرش وابتزاز وكيبقاو ساكتين ما كيهضروش يعني حنايا أول نقطة أنهم يتكلموا First, they need to encourage women to talk about the problem. And the third point is that they need to talk about the problem. And the third point is that they need to talk about the problem. And the third point is that they need to talk about the problem. Yeah, that's the question. Yeah, that's the question. هذه كاين صعوبة يعني أن بالنسبة لي نحن يا في في المجتمع ديالنا في المغرب يعني مثلا غير بارح أنا شفت واحد البوست في فيسبوك يقول لك أن ما يمكنش أنك تشد التليفون تصور مثلا في البوليسي ولا شي واحد يعني أن تقدر مثلا تكون في نقول في بلدية أو في جامعة تقدر تبغي تشد التليفون تصور حالة ديال التحرش ولا شي حاجة ياخذ منها تليفون ولا شي حاجة يعني هنا كاين صعوبة to take your, your phone and take pictures or did you, you know, uh, the, uh, the sexual harassment <coughs> is, uh, is not visible. So in it's, not it's not, it's not, it's well, not, is it not? It's not, 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 it's C'est pas forcément que pour les cas d'harcèlement, pour tout abus. Uh, okay, uh, so if we're that. talking about filming a policeman yeah, and transmission, yeah. yeah. then that is, that is actually a piece of law to film the policeman and transmission. I'm, I'm going to answer with a uh, legal perspective. Uh, yeah. and, uh, so I'm changing hat, I'm going to learn. Before Leila responds, did we finish translating what Sufiane no, said? Is still, is still, you know, uh, uh, I'm going to say that I'm أن قانون الجرائم الإلكترونية في المغرب حاليا يمنع تصوير الأشخاص يعني بدون علمهم يعني يقدر هو ينقال عليك. ولكن في حالة إذا كانت مثلا المحادثة مثلا على الواتساب أو مثلا جرى الفيسبوك يكون أسهل أنك أن يكون إثبات أو لا ممكن حتى تسجيل المكالمة. We have a general principle in criminal law. Uh, harassment, rape, all the violence is towards women fall under the criminal law uh, I mean category. And for all criminal law matters, we have one very simple principle, which is that the evidence is free. You can bring whatever evidence 
you want. Even if it's a, a, a video, it's a record, screenshots, uh, messages, uh, people who will testify for you, who are with you, all the proofs are free. So you can manage, you can be very creative, you can even organize the proof. In other cases, you cannot, like for example, um, PSG someone. Mm -hmm. But for criminal matter, you can. So just do it. And uh, now harassment is not even not only in the streets, etc. It can be WhatsApps, Facebooks, uh, Facebook messages. Uh, it can be it can be a situation you can feel. Actually, one of my interns, uh, sister, she's 15 years old. Uh, she was in a taxi with a tri taxi driver, and he was basically looking at her. She was wearing a skirt. He was looking at her and doing some very like, dirty things in in, uh, in, in, uh, in front of the car. She just took her phone and made a record of that. He was filmed. And that was enough. She went to the police and just uh, talked about it. And the case is accepted. So it's not a follow. -up. So just don't have this kind of limitation in your head. You are free to bring whatever it is necessary. It's, it's, I mean, at the very beginning, it's something super complicated. How are you going to prove that you have been raped? It's because rape is, the, it is not necessarily uh, something that is in the dark uh, uh, at night. In a, it, it can be everywhere. It can be everywhere. Uh, uh, the, the rape is the default of of accept of consent. The default of consent. It, it is when you have sex with someone you don't want to have sex with. So it's super complicated to prove that you didn't agree for that because it's something that is by nature transparent. I mean, it is something that we less by the class. So you are free. Just organize your proofs. If anything happens, you are free. Even if you, have, if you have a record, a movie, whatever, it is, it is, it can be accepted because it falls under the criminal law, and the criminal law is very open for all kinds of proofs. But does it mean that it's yes, really yes. not to accept it? To accept? Sorry. It, it, for example, it, it all depends on the police and the judge, basically. So it's also the, the it's also the other way around. No, they don't have the right not to accept it. Ah. They don't have the right not to accept it. It is, it is, uh, and then well, they have the right not to uh, not to uh, continue your case. They can do what is very common is classic on street and just make sure that okay, okay, it's not that uh, important. Your proof are not enough. But they don't have the right to tell you, oh, this video, it's a, it's a video I won't accept. It. This is not acceptable. So just arrange, uh, just be, feel free to uh, to uh, bring with you all everything. Even even a friend who was with you can testify everything. I do want to answer. I, 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 I do want to go first. So. Um, should I answer your question as well from, again, a journalist's point of view? Nico, Nico. Uh, <laughs> to answer from, from my, my point of view is one thing that, that is important, I think, for a survivor's uh, well-being is to be believed. And I think what has, is changing culturally is that we believe survivors more and more simply because, first of all, the overwhelming number of reported sexual assault cases are always true, I mean, and there and most of the time it's people you know, so we're talking about two different things, so yeah, sexual assault and rape, and then street harassment is another, is another thing, but mo most of the time women who are sexually assaulted or raped are raped by someone they know. And uh, one of the things I do when I meet someone who says that they were, that they're a survi survivor is just to ask them if they can gather any evidence. So what I mean by that is that if something ever happens to you at work or on campus or uh, with friends at a party to document it, so even write an email to yourself because 10 years later if you're ready to talk about it, it's going to be nice to have that email to show even if we want, I, I, I personally go, I, I decide that I just believe everyone. But it's always good to, to see something. So if you can email yourself or email a friend or talk about it to someone you trust who can testify for you even five years later, it's always important. So that kind of gathering what you can is important. Um. Je 
vais juste compléter un tout petit peu par la, la parole de Aïda. I'm just going to add a little bit to what Aïda said. Mm -hmm. uh, J'ai envie de vous dire que de même qu'il y a la présomption de d'innocence d'un violeur, il y a aussi la présomption de, vérité, de véracité de la parole de la victime. Sur cette statistique euh, globale, enfin, elles ne sont pas caractérisées par un, pour un pays, mais elles disent que sur 1000 dépôt de plainte pour viol. Il y a deux fausses plaintes. There are, there may be two false claims. 998 femmes ont été réellement violées. Uh, 1998 Ce que j'ai envie de dire, c'est que le législateur, il ne prévoit un, un arsenal euh, juridique, mais il y a aussi un travail qu'on a à faire nous. C'est d'abord croire ses victimes. Ce n'est pas facile pour une femme d'aller porter plainte. It's not easy for a woman to bring a complaint. À risque un lynchage. À risque d'être lynchée. Elle prend ce risque. Elle le prend ce risque. C'est-à-dire, elle met, elle met tout son, son avenir. Uh, She's putting her entire future at risk. Donc, si on peut aider juste par laisser faire le travail de la justice d'abord. Ce qui n'est pas évident déjà. Après, les lois, elles évoluent de deux manières. Les femmes, euh, le législateur, il prévoit les lois comme il peut, mais aussi, ça vient d'en bas, quand il y a une réelle demande. Et cette demande ne peut être réelle que si nous invitons les femmes vraiment à parler, en leur donnant le courage, en leur, en leur donnant cette force de parler et qu'elle n'ait pas peur. Vraiment. Imposer cette parole et, et la reconnaissance de la parole d'une victime. Ce n'est vraiment pas facile pour les femmes de parler. Support their voices because it's so hard for women to speak. We want to share with you a picture which just symbolizes what Maria just said. Um, it's a project called the Internet Project. Um, it's a group who actually tried to make us, they made a study about uh, all cases of rape. It's very complicated to, to have statistics. So this one, <laughs> um, but uh, we're gonna open it, and uh, it's very, it's very complicated. We all know, or not even know, but we all have this. We know a person who uh, went through a rape experience and took her. Uh, here it is. So this is a thousand person. Here you have. Uh, a thousand rapists. Mm -hmm. So you have here all the rapists. Here in clear brown here you have the rape that has been recorded. Mm -hmm. The darker brown there are, there are those who face trial. And actually in red you have those who have been jailed. So you can see the statistics. And these two here have been falsely mm -hmm. So this is this is what we are talking about. Actually. The evidence here plays a major role because all the women who didn't report it didn't didn't report it actually because they felt that either, as Maria said, it will destroy their whole life after that, or they don't have the right proof. And it gives us this situation. 
So the, the, the very first thing we all have to do is to trust the victims and to uh, continue our advocacy to make sure that uh, these voices are heard, are respected, because it is they don't deserve a second rape, uh, a rape from the society and from the justice after what happened to them. Karen, can yes. I ask a follow-up question sure. or two? Um, I'm working with Nova, and I really like what was said about telling somebody. I've noticed throughout the whole Me Too movement that the women whose cases eventually went to court, almost every single one of them had told somebody close to them 10, 12, 15 years ago. That adds a lot to the credibility. And I think that everybody at AUI probably, I don't know if you know this or not, but if you don't have anybody to talk to, what we do in NOVA, if you come to us, is take a report if you just want to talk, and we do nothing with it until you're ready to do something. And we believe you. I mean, I've been working with NOVA for five years, and I have, quite honestly, in 40, 45 cases, I know not all the right, but people come to talk to us, I have never seen a case that I don't think was true. Never. It's so hard to come even to NOVA mm -hmm. when we're not going to tell anybody and we're going to sit on it and we listen and we believe you. It's, I know it's very hard, but I, I think that advice more than anything else is, is the best advice we can give about some kind of evidence because you're not ready when you've been traumatized, no matter if it's somebody traumatizing you on the street and didn't touch you or out and rape, um, it takes a while to get over the shock. And so telling somebody about it at the beginning, I think really um, is helpful to the person and I think probably is one of the best things somebody who's been through any experience can do. And of course other things like getting physical proof together are important, but that's not so easy. Just talk to somebody about it is the other thing. But I just I also want to ask a follow-up question because I, I, we had been told before in NOAA by a lawyer we consult <coughs> that in criminal cases, um, videos, pictures, whatever is allowable. It's when you're trying to blackmail somebody that you're not allowed to take their picture and stuff like that. But I wanted to ask for some precision on this because I've, we've had actually Stephanie and Saida come talk to us uh, on campus, at least in, among the NOAA folks, on the new law. And there's one part that's criminal and one part that's not. Could, could someone lay out what it is uh, in terms of evidence and in terms of the difference between what is part of criminal law and what is part of including the new harassment part that's, that maybe, I don't know if the videos would work in that or not, but could you, could you distinguish between what falls under criminal law and what doesn't? Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Because the new law uh, introduced the harassment at criminal cost. So actually, what we did that Massachusetts we translated the law into English. Let me read it for you, <laughs> and you will see it's very straightforward and simple. Give me one second. But it's very important what you just said. Um, going to courts and trying to um, to obtain. Uh, a, a, a judge uh, decision after a rape is important, but it's not. It's not the whole. Uh, what is more important than that is just to talk about it. Just not not to feel alone. To have some people you can share that with, and with in, with which you will have this this very intimate relationship. Someone someone you can share that with, and who will understand will let you just speak up and just not keep that for yourself. It's the beginning of the, the healing procedure. Justice is, is part of it, but it's not the whole. Um, so the criminal, the new criminal code is article, it's not, it's article um, 503.1.1. Whoever persists, uh, so there's a first condition in persisting. So that this, this is something, uh, Feminists try to fight for because harassment by itself is some kind of persistence, but it is in the law. 
Whoever persists in harassing others in the following circumstances has committed sexual harassment and is subject to imprisonment from one month to six months uh, and or to a fine of 2,000 to 10,000 dirhams. First, acts, words, gestures of a sexual nature in public spaces. So it can be the and kind of thing, so they fall under that. Um, second, sexually explicit written, telephone, electronic messages, records, or images of a sexual nature <coughs> or for sexual purposes. So, text messages uh, with a sexual nature fall also under this, uh, under this law. The penalty is doubled if the perpetrator is a colleague or a person in charge of maintaining order and security in public areas or other areas. So if it comes from a <coughs> colleague, if it comes from uh, you know, in the workspace or from a policeman or, or whatever, it is the penalty is doubled. So this is exactly what this new law said. I guess they said the, um, also if it's a member, it's if uh, a family member. Yes, it is. Um, a the penalty is not for harassment, but for other for other uh, for violence. Okay, for violence, it wasn't included but now it is from uh, the husband. But not that's it. But not for it, for example. Feminists try to include domestic rape within the definition of rape. Uh, this has not been done. Um, but with some lawyers, we believe that we can still defend the fact that it is included because in criminal matter, for example, a rape is is the default of consent, right? Um, so it's general. If you want to exclude something, you have to say, except for this case, for this case. We don't have in our criminal law something saying that it excludes husbands who rape their wife. So for us, mm -hmm. uh, it is possible, it is still possible to argue that uh, uh, a domestic race is a rape. I think it's something we should try. I want to know if your question was answered before we take another question. Uh, is there not another new law that's out of the work code that's in the criminal code? that's reflected by the is not something that doesn't is considered criminal, but is part of reflected by the eye that's new. That's, that's why I was asking for a distinction. So this is for harassment at work. I'm asking. Harassment at work is is uh, the which new was law. already on the book. Exactly, it changed. The new thing is that now with this new law, they double the penalty when the harassment is made at work. This is the new thing, but it was already included. Uh, harassment at work was included uh, in the in the in the in the work code uh, with no specific penalty for it. It was just like. Uh, uh, Possibility gives a possibility to the employee to just terminate their contract and ask for damages, but it was not da damage. It, it was not a criminal. Uh, okay. It was not criminal. No, it is. There, there are two questions here. Yours and then yours. Uh, oh, and Sufian. Sufian wants to respond, and then I'll take your two questions. Is that okay. صدفنا محامية تكلمة المشاركات عن القانون المستجد الذي فيه وعندنا نقطة يعني بالنسبة لنا هنا في سمع صوتك أن المشكل في المغرب ماشي في المحتوى يعني القانون القانون يعني وكان يعني بعد نقاط القانون ولكن المشكل بالأساس كيف في الثقافة وفي الهيكل يعني في التطبيق ديال هذا القانون يعني. And a problem of there is a cultural problem around it. That people what do you mean by the cultural problem? People don't accept it. Yes. بالنسبه للنقاط اللي صرفناهم حنايا ان مثلا هذا القانون هذا باقي الناس ما عرفتش اصلا موجود بينات ولا بنات ولا عيالات مثلا في المناطق المهمشه ما عرفتش انا كاين شي قانون جديد كاين. Areas, you know, so people don't speak about this law and they don't know about it. 
So there is a problem of spreading, you know, uh, uh, the culture of law making and that what is a law and who can know about it. Well, I'm just uh, actually since our audience, I'm not that that's not important, but since our audience is AUR, my my question would be to what extent does that extend to judges that cultural? Um, you know that that even the judges yeah. don't know. I'm going to give you an example. Uh, we have uh, the law in Morocco, uh, we have um, very severe uh, penalties against rape, right? It can go to 20 years of prison, from, from uh, 1 to 10. And uh, when it, it is under such extraordinary circumstances, it can, go, it, it, can, it can be 20 years, right? Um, we were shocked with Maria uh, after Khadija's case. We were discussing with the, with the lawyer actually in charge of the case. And, we, and it's, it's terrible. You know, we heard about the story. And the, the lawyer told us, well, it will be a victory if we have five years. I said, what? Five years? It's not been five years. And, and he told us, well, five years is a lot. You know, the average. Um, Condamnation for rape are one year, six what? months, one year. Sometimes it's not even it's 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 just it. Um, so when we went to a little bit into details, we realized that you probably heard about her. Another girl called Khadija. She had been raped in 2016. Yeah, by her rapist. Uh, they shamed her. They. But she, she took, it took her a lot of courage to go and talk to the police. She went all through the trial, right? And at the end of the day, they were, they, they, they were cleaning for one and six months. So she committed a suicide. Mm -hmm. It tells you a lot. We, we have a law, mm -hmm. okay, on harassment. We have a law against rape. We have all these things. Mm -hmm. But, at the end of the day, if it's to go all through all this process uh, with everything around it, uh, all the, the change it will bring in your in your life, to have this uh, these guys being uh, finished by one year prison, it's just this is a real problem, and I totally agree with this lawyer. It is a real problem. So it is also something we want to address at as a test, but. It's a <laughs> it's a long problem. Yeah. So as Sophia said, I mean, there is no uh, I mean, no studies made, you know, of judges whether they make this uh, uh, law you know, <coughs> the they, they they have a negative attitude towards it or, or a positive attitude. Uh, I mean, no one knows about it. Actually, yes, because you, uh, all you have to do is look at uh, decisions by judges, which are actually kept together by. NGOs. I did, I did a story five years ago. I did a story five years ago about NGOs all over Morocco, and what they do is that they go to court, court hearings and court decisions, and they just type all these decisions into a website. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can keep track of every of decisions all over the country that judges make on women-related issues, so divorce and. Uh, rape and all of that, and again, uh, it's pretty incredible <laughs> how, how little the law is applied by these judges. Exactly the same thing with child marriage, which is supposed to, I mean, the, the minimum age is 18 since 2004, but I think judges grant the authorization to get married and don't quote me on this because I don't remember the percentage, but it's over 90%. Yeah. 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 Question, and would you identify yourself for our panelists as Oh, well? yeah. My name is Nada. I'm a student here at Khawen. Um, my question goes back to the Khadija case and the support that you spoke about. How do you grant support to someone when you have doctor specialized in removing tattoos and stuff who speaks for 12 minutes and proves that her claims are wrong. And when you read other articles from presumably, I mean, media that you can trust, you know, known ones, 
that's quite difficult and unfortunately um, um, I mean I, I hate seeing this saying this but it creates kind of a mistrust towards victims mm -hmm. and I developed this um, new behavior whenever I would hear a story I would go and you know read a lot about it before confirming it or hearing or speaking about it to my friends and oh this is you know so tragic this is sad we should do something about it or even just donating the uh, money so yeah this is my I'll go first, and I think everyone wants to answer that question. <laughs> well, first of all, that woman that you mentioned, the 12 minutes video, is not a doctor. She's, um, voila. <laughs> yeah, and it's, like, she, she, no, she, she's a beauty, uh, yeah, an esthetician. So she's not a doctor. First big mistake by the media was to present her as a doctor. I was sent that video by maybe 50 people. That's one of the reasons that really got me to drive six hours to Beni Milan for that trial, uh, because I was just so outraged by how reckless the media were. So first of all, she's not a specialist. And it's just, I mean, from my point of view, I see this, I'm like, how do you meet someone for a few minutes and have a diagnosis? It just doesn't sound right to me as an approach. No expert, uh, I've sat through trials and I've, I've listened to experts in these cases. You're supposed to have an expert appointed by the judge. And I'm talking about countries where there's an actual rule of law, which is not the case here, but you're supposed to have an expert who is appointed by the judge, who is credible, who conducts a, around the tests, who argues. Uh, you've watched shows on criminal justice. You have experts who like redo the crime, and you have all the forensic evidence and so on, which was all this woman did was come and promote her business and talk for 12 minutes and she started saying that Morocco needs to be stable and have tourists and when I hear these things I just like tune out because it's just not credible. I mean this is a person with a clear agenda to kill a media frenzy and um, so you have that. And then when you're talking about media, the media, you're talking about credible sources, are you talking about a desk or in these kind of places? Okay. <laughs> Um, I don't like to talk about other journalists, but all I will say is that when you read an article, pay attention to the sources. Pay attention. When you read the New York Times covering uh, these kind of cases, you see the incredible work put into verifying the claims. And they lay out for you how they verify them. So they're going to say, in a text message refu reviewed by the New York Times, in a police report reviewed by the New York Times, you have this kind of evidence that are very strongly displayed to you by, by the news outlet. And you need to pay attention to that. And that's also part of, I mean, the world right now is having huge issues with all this wrong information spreading really quickly through social media. And um, what we all have to learn collectively is just be careful. And, and the thing is, like, why would someone, the first question I ask myself, why would someone put themselves through saying that 17 men raped them for two months? And go through, I read the police report from the first word until the last one. Uh, why would someone go through, and I only read, by the way, I only wrote the article because I had access to the police report, because I wanted to read first-hand evidence myself. And why would someone go through, spend, she spent three days at the police station testifying. Why would someone put, themselves through that kind of horror in a small village where everyone judges you, where you have to face your neighbors every day calling you a lawyer, uh, a liar, sorry. <laughs> Call, calling you a liar, calling you uh, names. Um, I mean, why? What do you get out of it? Nothing. Like, what's, what's the added benefit from making up such a horrible story? That's why I think this, I think this is, a, as a survivor, your first instinct is to question what really happened to you. That's the first thing. So, you know, guilt. yes, guilt comes after, but you almost want to deny that anything happened to you so you can go on your life living a normal life. So I think this is a very, very, and 
you know, society is not very welcoming. Okay, you start becoming a woman with the baggage. And I understand that, you know, when I stated that I was a survivor of violence, of male violence, that, you know, people clapped. You know, that's very short-lived. At the end of the day, there's a switch that goes off. Society is not very welcoming to um, things that have happened to women. And they do end up being judged for that, and sometimes by their friends. Okay, so I think it's very, very important to understand that for a woman to make that walk, okay, we talked about Khadija, and I think to me, this is what sold me on her case, is for her to come home, you know, there was a bargain between the parents, and this was corroborated by many people, that there was a bargain that, you know, for her to be returned to her home after the hell that she's been through, and I've translated the police report for a mm -hmm. mm -hmm. to English, mm -hmm. and so I've been through every single word of that. And uh, for her to, you know, be, for, for her family to promise that they will not say a word, mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. so she can come home. And for her to come home and walk to the police against her parents' will, you know, instead of just kind of hiding it, mm -hmm. to contain the horror. Mm -hmm. You know, then the horror just goes beyond, above and beyond anything that she's that could that anyone can imagine. And you know, it takes incredible strength to be able to make that walk to the police station against your parents, well, against your, against every single custom in that small world of yours, just to try and get some 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 justice. You know, you, you're willing to lose everything, basically. So I think, I think we need to keep that in mind when women go to report something. It could be 10 years later. Mm -hmm. It could be 15 years later. So.